a very special episode today. Today, we're going to attempt the ultimate heat pump challenge, a pre-1919 terrace home, which the reason it's the ultimate heat pump challenge is because it's Britain's most common home, but they always present all the biggest problems you ever get with putting in a heat pump all in one home. And this home here is no different. As their customer knows, they've had several heat pump engineers here, and they've all said this home is just literally impossible. The other reason this is the ultimate heat pump home for me personally is because this is also the home of my co-founder and Heat Geek CEO, Mr. Adil Qureshi. Hello. Hello, how are you, mate? Good, thank you. How are you? See, very a little well. bit wet. Yeah, well, thanks for lending your coats. That's all right. Come on in, Harrison. Um, the, your home's lovely. <laughs> I'm joined by Wesley from West Hampton Heating to see if we can hey, doing all right, to see if we can solve this ultimate heat pump challenge. Um, and just to give you an example, this is a terrace house, like I say. So if it's a terrace house, typical issues are no front, uh, no space out the front to locate a heat pump, no space out the back. This one has a whole wall of glass out the back, quite common these days uh, to again locate the heat pump. You have sound compliance issues, so uh, you can't make too much noise next to a, win uh, a neighbor's window. Uh, we have to stay one meter away from the boundary. We have to look at you know how to solve that, uh, and then as again, the most common homes in Britain, it's old. So we've got single skin brick on the outside of this, giving less insulation. Old sash windows typically on these, this one's been upgraded to double gauge sash, a suspended floor. But most importantly, as common in older homes, this house has been extended and upgraded throughout the years. This is an extension in uh, the 90s and another in 2020, leaving pretty old crappy plumbing everywhere. Uh, it's got plastic push fit, um, it's got microbore pipework, which is like super skinny pipework. Whenever you have microbore pipework, it's typically seen that you have to um, replace all of that plumbing in the uh, in the property. Um, uh, that problem's here. But uh, additionally, on top of that, this whole home has just been completely renovated from top to bottom. So we actually have to work with what we've got. We can't replace any of the stuff. We can't open up the walls. We've got to work with what's there. So, um, oh, and lastly, because this is a, a London, central London home, uh, and with many homes uh, this sort of type, this has been upgraded with a combination boiler, so there's nowhere to site hot water. So yeah, so uh, all three strikes of all the worst things to encounter on a heat pump job. Yeah, that's brilliant, lovely. I just well, I need a heat kick. <laughs> I love the challenge. Cool. Love it. Should we do it? Let's do it. Woo! So that, that's right, isn't it? You had like three or four engineers in. Um, they all said like, they just can't really heat pump this house at all, practically. It's pretty much impossible, right? Yeah, I mean, when we were redoing it, I was like, surely now's a good time to get that going. During the full renovation? Yeah, I know the whole house is completely you know, stripped back, so we could do anything we want. The, the plumbers, part of the building team, were like, well, we don't really know about heat pumps. I'm not sure if they work. Googled a bit more, found you on YouTube, watched way too many videos. And I was like, this is the thing. Like, why, why don't I just, we should just do this. Then it was calling sort of installer after installer, either they're too busy if they were really into heat pumps or they weren't available or they were like, no, sorry, they don't work. Oh, I don't do work in London or whatever it might be. Uh, and so that's when I kind of stalked you and uh, walked up to you and said, how do we fix this? Because this is the most common type of property. I tell you what amazed me, that, so um, Adil knocked, uh, tapped me on the shoulder when I was busy at a trade show um, and interrupted me and um, pitched the idea that, uh, of this new digital way of doing things. Uh, and I will remember that till the day I die, this guy tapped me on the shoulder, turned me around and went, imagine this, blah, 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 and all of my problems were fixed. What we've now built is the ability for people to type in their postcode press enter and get an idea. And you know- It was a pretty accurate heat knock. Absolutely, and we're constantly feeding the data back from all the installs that we do into that. All heating engineers will definitely resonate with this is there's a them and us, uh, a them and us sort of attitude in the industry. And it always feels like, oh, those stupid plumbers, they don't know what we're doing. They need an app, let's give them an app. Uh, don't empower them with education or anything like that. That's always great at me. The understanding of that um, tech side, which as I say, when uh, Adil explained the, the vision he had to me of how we can streamline this and actually we could just do the whole nation, which is way outside of my previous sort of scope. That's the beauty of what I actually love about this is that the together was the solution. And I think we both literally represent that. And that's like that's why he gigs like amazing. <laughs> So 
So what Wesley's doing at the moment is uh, he scanned the whole house. He's taken all the uh, underfloor heating, it's underfloor heating in this part of the house, and radiator details. And now he's just like trimming some information. Specifically, he's looking at air changes in each room, um, uh, using his kind of background knowledge of how he's looked at different homes and monitoring them over uh, their operation. The next thing you guys need to go and find is the boiler, because the boiler is like, it's the next step, because most of the plumbing always comes back to the boiler, especially when you've got a combi boiler. If you guys go and find that, I've got some other work to do, yeah. uh, and let me know how you get on. I haven't seen it, so you've got to tell me where you've hidden it. Yeah, it's uh, in a little bit of uh, an interesting place. So, so uh, normally... Upstairs? No, it's here. Right. And normally, you would put it in a cupboard at the end. Yeah, but, outside wall, which uh, we don't have. Yeah, so we've kind of, kind of took the steels right to the edge. That's problem one. Problem two is that we wanted this like shelf with the plants on it. Mm -hmm. And so had to move the boiler somewhere that was not there. Right, okay. So we moved it, not here, this is not a boiler, to here. Perfectly, right in the middle. Which um, causes a bit of a problem because obviously the boiler's there. Mm -hmm. So basically here, you've mm -hmm. got the waste pipe for the whole house above and another pipe for the rainwater for the roof and all the other above things, the boiler. And then the flue goes up here, behind there, behind there, and behind there, and then out through the flat roof, mm -hmm. which is a fiberglass roof with this like massive thing. It looks like a rocket ship or something like that. The wife's criteria is not to lose any storage space. But the builders loved you <laughs> when they put this in. We should have loads of space for a cylinder but this has got where you put your slow cooker and your mm -hmm. bamboo steamer it's a very nice shelf and your tins of whatever mm -hmm. and so we can't use this cupboard either oh and by the way up here is like the server so all of the cat 6e stuff terminates there the router the virgin media hub everything is there so we can't like use any of that space either. Just gonna need someone with superhuman small hands. So yeah, no room, no room for a cylinder, uh, no room for any sort of plant, essentially, and a very tightly um, boxed in boiler yeah. and flue. That's it. Perfect. Probably, Do you want to see behind this? No, I'd probably say maybe I, I would say stick to the tech and start up, <laughs> not architecture. But look, the plant shelf. Yeah. This was all worth it. For the for, uh, yeah, the world's most expensive plant shelf. <laughs> Today is so exciting for me because you know this is the most common house. These are the most common problems, and a lot of people would probably still say, "But hold on a minute, this is still not possible." And I think for me to see us tick off all of these problems, which is going to be super simple, right? Um, I think would be, uh, you know, that that's the end result. It's basically the physics combining with the software together that, you know, what Wes is going to do, you know, with his hands to like fix the problem combined with the software stuff that we built. That for me is just absolutely awesome. So uh, in the top section, where the flue was, we're just going to have the flow and return pipes to the heat pump. Yep. Down here we'll have less valves, if anything, because we're going to take all that junk that's in there now. We're going to get rid of the pump, we're going to get rid of the mixing valve, blending valve, all of that. We can drop Zone the... valves? Zone valve's going to go, it's all going to be open loop. All that electronic junk is going to go. All of that's coming out of the... Streamlined it. And then you're just going to have down here three port valve. Yep, diverter moving over from hot water to heating. We can drop the manifold as well. And essentially this gives us this space here, which with the mini store is just going to... Take it up and that's it. And because the mini store doesn't use, um, it doesn't need G3, we don't need um, the expansion vessel or any other pressure relief pipe work, which no. I don't actually think there's anything else we could have done here, is it? Because how would you got that the pressure relief pipe work? I don't even know. Actually, this could potentially take up, this will take up the same amount of room as a combi boiler. Yeah, we're going to streamline it down and actually, yeah, make it all more accessible. So while they're piddling down there around in the cupboard trying to figure out what's going to go where, you may have noticed them mention a mini store as a hot water solution for where a cylinder, typical hot water cylinder, won't fit. This building and Adil are actually what the mini store was originally designed to solve. Now a little story about Adil. Adil is known for his shower thoughts. So when we have a problem at work, we all kind of uh, all gather around and see if we can normally try and fix it in some kind of way. He normally goes home and he always has a shower thought uh, because he drenches himself in this thing for extra long amounts of time, wasting some heat and water. But on the plus side, there is like a 
carbon benefit at the end because there's normally a fantastic solution that we know as a, a dill shower thought. So uh, I thought I'd come and have a look at this. This is a uh, quite a high flow rate. If I can solve this high flow rate and keep those thoughts coming up for um, uh, Heat Geek to keep us at the forefront of the industry with such little space, then we're on to a winner. Uh, the test is obviously uh, the proof in the pudding. We'll see how that sort of forms when it goes in. Um, but looking at this, I think we're gonna be able to resolve this with quite high efficiency and uh, have more than enough hot water to satisfy this shower for prolonged amounts of time and for the bath they've got downstairs for the kids. So we've got your heat loss done, Yeah, done the scan. The next thing is where we're gonna put the heat pump. Now normally you'd obviously, I'd always ask that first before yeah. we start anything else, just so we know, but you're not your average punter. You're invested heavily in the heat pump. So where are we gonna put it? Well, so, I mean, now it's like, why didn't we put a space for it outside? Because like we built this sort of decking area out the back and it's quite easy to route pipe work into there. Um, or on the left hand side, mm -hmm. Like we could have put it where that sort of just after the outdoor kitchen. But the reality is like now putting it in there, routing pipes, like most of the wall is covered in glass. So it's like, it's just not gonna yeah. go in the garden. So it's less of an issue that we don't have space in the garden for us. Like it would be fine there. So we were thinking on the roof. That's the money shot, a booty. So this is where it needs to go, I guess. Yeah, so I think as we were saying, you've got skylights. So really, realistically here is your, yeah. is your spot, all mounted. Sound-wise, it's good because we're quite far away from neighbors' windows. And that's a bathroom, that's a bathroom. Ooh, you're just off the window. Perfect. Yeah, come across the back. Just straight across there because no one's walking there. Um, How do we get it here? Adam's volunteered. He said he's going to just carry it up on his back. How did I go from like original founder to not CEO and cameraman demotion? <laughs> and not even start. He doesn't even know I put that, that he's down actually going to be heat pump lifter upper. I, I put that down to poor life choices. <laughs> oh, we, we need the. Oh, is it past the sound right? test? Um, I think it doesn't it do that automatically. Oh, yeah. what did you put in the distance? I put five meters. It should be. Yeah. It's, it's more than that. It's more than five meters. Yeah. But that's it, isn't it? Save that. And then... So it says the noise assessment yeah, is fine done. anyway. So it's past the noise assessment. Yeah. Good. When we, uh, when I did like an amateur hour version of the heat loss calculation of this house, it came out about 11 kilowatts. And so I'm kind of really excited to see what Wes comes back with, with our own tooling. I haven't done it for quite a while. And I wonder if actually with all of that data feeding back in, informing us on the real performance of all the heat pumps we've installed, the data we've got coming from there, see what's going to happen as a result of that and whether or not we're going to actually be able to do this house without five heat pumps all the way down the end of the garden, which I might get in a bit of trouble for. So looking at what, what our max flow is and what, whether it's going to bring us with our current meters. So at the moment, just 45. So if we had a 40 fly, 45 degree flow temperature, yep. the master bedroom would be underpowered by 118 watts. Yeah. That rear bedroom is the dodgy one. That's the problem, because that rad was, all the rads were sized for physical dimensions, not for anything else. Yeah, yeah. so what is the actual heat loss of this? Uh, 70, uh, so so it's we've got 500 watts, um, and, and we need an extra 200 watts to, to meet the demand of that room. Yeah. Here's where we need to do um, ag uh, room grouping, and I think, do we have the photo? I think she was, total heat loss is 7.3 kilowatts, total radiator output is only 100 watts off, so, with a bit of balancing, mm. we're pretty much in the ballpark for 50 degree flow temperature, right? Yeah. And has this got the um, SCOP at 50 degree flow temperature? So SCOP 3.6. So we, we can get it in without any radiator um, installs. Actually, so with our with the Higgy proposition, our minimum offered SCOP is 3.6. Mm. We always ex uh, exceed that. We yeah. only come down by you know a few degrees. That's going to be up at 4, 4.2 or something, which will make it cheaper than a gas boiler. Off the bat, with zero radiator replacements, we can get this thing heat pumped. The maps is always over X, so we're always mm. come, probably come down to 45 in reality. Um, uh, I think you'll be actually saving significant uh, sensible amounts of money uh, over a gas boiler if you did a swap for no radiator installs, which is good to hear because Britain's most common home and the ultimate heat pump change That's it. isn't a challenge at it's all. It's not that crazy. So could we decarbonize or heat pump the ultimate heat pump challenge? We had age of the building, it was pre-1919, very old building. 
terrace, nowhere to locate it. What do we think? It's doable. Is it's it even hard? Doable. It's not actually as hard as we thought. We hit all those, we hit all the strikes first of all we thought we were going to get, come up against. And actually, by planning it properly, by sizing it properly, we've brought it well within reasonable limits of anyone. I mean, we've still got fit it. We have not done the fitting yet, unfortunately. That's a good point. But uh, it looks like from now, it looks like it's doable. Well, on that note, I think in order to put our, uh, the money where the mouth is, we're going to have to follow up and get this thing done. Uh, so make sure you subscribe for notifications when that happens. Comment if you disagree with anything or you agree. And uh, make sure you like the video and we'll see you on the next one. Getting good at that. Hi guys, producer Harrison here. If you love Heat Geek content, then you will love our brand new second channel, Heat Geek Uninsulated, linked in the description below. Here you will find all of our podcasts and extended content for our most hardcore viewers. Head on over to Heat Geek Uninsulated and subscribe to stay up to date.